Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on, right there we're at. Let's begin to lift our hands this morning. Have you not already stand? Let's begin to stand this morning. Come on, we're going to continue to press in this morning. We have a few minutes left of prayer. But this morning, we want to make sure that we are tapping into God's presence this morning. Knowing and understanding that, hey, you know, God's going to begin to overflow this place. But it starts here with us this morning. So right there where you're at this morning, come on. Let's begin to pray this morning. You're going to begin to pray for that family member. Begin to pray for that friend, that co-worker this morning that you've been reaching out to. Right there where you're at. Come on, let's begin to lift our hands. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord. We pray, Father God, and believe, Father God, for a breakthrough this morning, Lord. We pray for an outpouring of your spirit this morning with upon each and every single one of our lives, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for showing up this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do this morning, Lord. I pray right now, Father God, for that unsafe family, Father God, that unsafe family member, Father God, that's out there lost, Father God, that backslider this morning, Father God. We pray, we believe, Father God, that you're going to begin to move like never before, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for what you're doing this morning, Father God. We lift up, Father God, every individual that's here this morning, Father God. Father God, that you open up their ears, Father God. Open up their hearts, Father God. Let them receive what you have for them this morning, Lord. Father God, we just pray, Lord Jesus, that it's you, Lord. That it's you in the center of it all this morning, Father God. We lift up the messenger this morning, Lord. Put your edge of protection upon him this morning, Father God. Father God, we're thankful, Father God, for what you're doing here at Victory Outreach Trey Cities, Father God. Father God, we just pray, Lord, that you just continue to move this morning, Lord. We need you this morning, Jesus. We need you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father God, this morning, Lord. Oh, come on, let's continue to tap in this morning. Let's continue to believe this morning. Oh, come on, right there where you're at. The Bible says we can't get weak and weary in doing good. And doing good is when we're tapping into his presence. When we're tapping into God's presence, we can't get weary. We just got to continue to press through. Continue to believe this morning. Continue to believe this morning. Continue to stand in the gap for that family member. Continue to stand in the gap for that co-worker. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Father God, this morning. Just let your presence fall thick with upon this place this morning. Let your presence just fall with upon us this morning, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. Let's continue to bleed. How many of us came expecting this morning? Come on, how many of us came expecting? If you came expecting this morning, if you came believing, I just want to encourage you this morning to step out your seat this morning. Step out your seat this morning. Let God begin to do something this morning. God wants to do something within each and every single one of our lives. But it takes us to begin to believe that this morning. It takes us to begin to believe that, hey, you know what? I'm going to step out my comfort zone. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and let God begin to do what he has to do within my life. I believe that this morning that God's just going to begin to fall upon each and every single one of us here this morning. So right there where you're at this morning, let's begin to lift our hands. We're going to come together with one mind and one accord, believing this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, I come before you this morning, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you just begin to flood this place with your presence this morning, Father God. We're praying and we're believing for a breakthrough this morning, Father God. We're praying and we're believing and understanding, Father God, that we came from a word from you this morning, Father God. Let it be you in the center of it all, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah.
focus on him.
Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on with that same excitement this morning. It's time for us to receive our tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Come on. We need to be excited for that. We need to be excited to pay our tithes and offering. Amen. If you need a tithing envelope this morning, just wave your hand. There's those gentlemen in the aisles will get you a tithing envelope or the ladies up here. We have several ways to give this morning. We have in person right here by cash through an envelope. We also have our push pay app. Just text 77977 and follow the on-screen prompts. And we also have a QR code. Come on, somebody. You just right there. You just put your phone right to it. It'll take you right to the link. Amen. So you can just give right there. Also, we're doing a $20 challenge. Amen. A $20 challenge is above and beyond your tithing. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I got a scripture this morning. In Malachi, it says, in 3.10, it says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be enough food in my house. It says, Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. What is the storehouse? It's the church. Amen? What does he want us, our tithe and offering to go? To bring those souls to the storehouse. To bring the souls that are out there hurting to the house of God. That's what the finances are used for. To keep the lights on, to keep the power or the, the, the building open, for the rent, to, for those flyers, for all that on, online stuff that we do, the, the, the Facebook and all that. That's what, it's, that's what it's all about. It's reaching. Amen. The storehouse is God's house. And he asked us, as we all stand this morning, hallelujah. And it also says farther down in the scripture, it says, don't rob me. You're robbing me if you don't pay your tithes and offering. You're robbing me. It says it in the Bible, not me. So with that, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, God, I ask God that you touch these tithes and offerings. Pray, we ask you to touch the one that's giving to, today, God, and God, that one that would like to, re to give, God, and they just can't. We're asking you to bless everyone in this place, God, this morning. In the name of Jesus. And you can bring your tithing forward. Amen. Drop it in the basket. I'm drinking my sorrows. I'm drinking my shame. Gang Regional. Hallelujah. So you're all invited to come out. Hallelujah. And with that, we have a video announcement. Oh, somebody in this room, you're going to be the mold breaker for your generation. Somebody in this room, you're going to break the mold in your city. People have not seen what you're about to do. Yo! What is going on in the Northwest Third Wave? Listen, right around the corner, November 20th, make sure you mark your calendars because we are having our pre-Third Wave Con service. It's gonna be a powerful time. I'm excited to be able to be there with you guys and I know that God is gonna do something great. So make sure you come expecting, make sure you come with your hearts ready to receive because we know that God is gonna show up and move in a powerful way. So I can't wait to see you November 20th. Make sure you mark your calendars. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. How many? Ex are you, that's it. How many, how many excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to welcome you this morning. Today we're just going to do something special. Amen. Out of the box. Out of the box. Amen. And my wife is going to do uh, uh, a presentation.
this morning. Is that all right? Amen. It's going to have to be all right. Amen. We're going to do it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Amen. So the theme of our month is I love my church. Amen. And um, I love my church. I love Tri-Cities. I love each and every single one of you and all the work that everyone does. But today, there's some people that stand out that have been with us for a number of years and have done a lot of work behind the scenes and help us to make this church grow. Amen. So today we're going to honor them with a special gift uh, for my husband and myself. So first, we're going to start with our home directors, Brother Tim and Sister Adriana. They have, um, they have been in our church for 10 years. They are our men's home directors. At one time, Adriana ran the women's home, and she does all of our food and hospitality ministry as well. Amen? Amen. So, Tim and Adriana. Next, we have our women's home directors. We have Maribel and Brother Polo. Brother Polo has been in our church for 12 years, and Maribel has been here for nine. Um, Maribel currently does the women's home, but Polo did our first men's home. Amen. He was our first men's home director other than my husband. Amen. Amen. So that's Brother Polo and Maribel. Next, we have our discipleship home directors, which is Albert and Cheryl. Amen. Albert and Cheryl have been, um, Albert's been in our church for a while, but what you don't know is that God has, uh, well, you might have known because he shares it a lot, but God has restored their marriage in 2019. Amen. And Cheryl has been a part of our church and they're there directing our, our women's discipleship home right now. Amen. It's not an official discipleship home, but they've seen a need and they met it. Amen. Amen. They also do our ushering as well. Amen. And then our third wave. How many of you know that our third wave makes this church go? Amen. They keep us on our toes. Amen. So the first ones we have is Brother Anthony and Sister Esmeralda. Anthony's been in our church since the beginning. Esmeralda's been here for 11 years. They are regional gang leaders, also our local leaders. Amen. Es Esmeralda works in our office. She does the kids gang. She does a lot. Anthony does more than just a gang. He does the worship. He does the gang home. He does the media. He does a lot. Amen. He has a lot of hats. Next, we have um, Brother Bobby and Sister Selena. Selena has also been in the church since the beginning of time. They are also UTC alumni from the West Coast and the East Coast. Amen. Together, they work and are young adults. Selena does the uh, women's prayer. Also, the kids gang, Bobby does media, he does, Bobby uh, also uh, wears many hats, amen? They do a lot, wherever the need is met, amen? Amen, Selena and Bobby. Next, we have Jordan and Sister Deanna. They have been in our church for 10 years, amen? They currently do our next, our new gen, amen? Also, Deanna is a teacher in our kids gang. They also are part of the worship team. And they help out a lot in the gang as well. Amen? Amen. Jordan and Deanna. Next, we have Sister Gabriella. Gabby is also works on the young adult team in the gang girls. She does a lot. She's also our director of all our dramas. She does the kids gang. Gabby wears a lot of hats as well. Amen? So, Gabby. Next, we have Brother James Magania, amen? So he has been in our church for nine years. As you know, he is our worship leader. He also works in the gang, amen? So he is, this is James Magania. He has been very faithful, amen? <laughs> amen. Next, we have Brother Timmy, amen? And he does a lot. Timmy does a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody knows about. He works also in our media. He's been here with his parents for 12 years. He's grown up in ministry, and we appreciate everything that Timmy does. Amen? So on with our worship team, amen? They're also, like, a lot of these people are involved in everything. Amen? <laughs> so we have the guy who started it all 13 years ago, Brother Cipriano. Amen? You might not know, but Brother Cipri has been with us for 13 years. He started our very first worship team. 
Him and Anthony worked in our garage and uh, made the worship team happen. Amen. So let's give it up for Brother Sipri. Love you, Sipri. Next, we have Sister Alma, who has been here for 13 years. She is on our worship. She's in our kids' game. She does our hospitality and also our women's life group. Amen. Alma does a lot as well. <laughs> as you can see, these people are involved in a lot of stuff. <laughs> Next, we have Brother um, Brian and Sister Lupe, amen. Brother Brian also works behind the scenes. Sister Lupe works a lot behind the scenes, does a lot of the worship. She's involved in our kids' gang, and she is our church cook, amen. Everybody loves Sister Lupe's cooking, amen. And then this is the... This woman right here is the queen of behind the scenes work, amen? Yes, she's up here on the stage, but she is our kids gang overseer. This is Sister Shannon, amen? She's been in our church for 10 years as well. She does all of our admin work that nobody knows about. <laughs> she does all of our kids gang next gen, amen? She makes all of our t-shirts that we're wearing. <laughs> She does a lot behind the scenes that nobody knows. Amen. We appreciate you, Shannon. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, she's not here today, but she is watching online. It's our um, granny, Brenda. Amen. Yeah. We love you, Brenda. Brenda does so much behind the scenes. She gives over and above. She brings um, love and lots of special packages to our men's home, our women's home. She gives to whoever is in need here in the church all the time. She gives over and above. We love you, Granny Brenda. We we miss you here. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Amen. We just, uh, we, we're just so grateful. Amen. For those that do the handwork scene and for those that are always laboring. Amen. And I know that we got more Amen. So, so say we got more. more. Amen. We're not done yet, but uh, we just want to begin with the oldies and goodies. Hallelujah. They've been here for 13 years. I was seeing some pictures. They pop up, and I, I, was, I, I sent it to Alma this morning. We used to babysit Itael when he was like two, two years old. Amen. And the next one, and the next one. Hallelujah. So, so uh, they've been with us for a while. So, thank you very much. Let's all stand. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a worship song. Let's go with the worship song. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands with where you're at. Also, Facebook Live. If you're on Facebook Live, come on, lift your hands with where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get an attitude of worship this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. It's your wonderful, incredible grace. It's your love. It's your, it's your grace. It's your wonderful, it's your wonderful, incredible grace. Say, I, I want to fall in love with you. I want to fall in love with you. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you will remove me and let the Spirit of God flow through me this morning. Speak to your people as you've spoken to me, Father God. Open our minds, open our hearts to receive your word clearly with understanding it will change us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we say amen. Turn around, give somebody a high five or a wave. You can be seated, amen. And we have a video. Amen, real quick. Hallelujah. My name is Joyce. I grew up in the church um, as the pastor's kid, and uh, it was really about a 
family affair of getting everybody in the car and getting to church. We were the first ones there and the last ones to leave often. Um, but as a child, going to church was more about taking on the role of being the pastor's kid. And as an adult, uh, going to church has become and continues to increasingly become more about plugging into the church as a member of the body of Christ. So being at my church, uh, I benefit tremendously. I can't, I can't really imagine um, life without not just my particular church, but my universal church, but in particular as it relates to community, I, I know, I feel like these days I'm learning that God is um, so relational and wants to be in a relationship with us. And one of the ways he does that is by being in church and being in community with his people. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've texted three or four people from my home group and saying, can you please pray for this? You know, and you have that immediate dialogue where the women respond, oh, I'm praying for this, or they're sincere about it, uh, people who care about you, people who care about your children, um, and your Christian walk. Just today I was on our church website um, looking for the various ministry opportunities that I could get involved in, and I only just discovered that we have a prison ministry and we have a homeless outreach, a, a feeding homeless, and not relevant to me, but a Bible study for uh, formerly homeless men on Monday mornings. And I was just so excited to know that um, my church is plugged into loving the community. Um, and, in being, and in being part of my church, I know that I have an immediate resource in which I can help, in which I can obey the word of God. I can, I can love others. I can feed the poor. I can... Um, I can be plugged into to loving God's world and his people and showing Christ's love. I think there's so many opportunities to grow as a Christian by being part of a church. I don't know how I would grow otherwise. I really enjoy even the opportunities when I talk to people in my community and just mention, well, on Sunday I'm doing this. But it's not just, I go to church on Sundays, it's, um, I'm involved in an outreach ministry through my church on Saturday afternoon or, oh, we can't do that because we're doing this other thing. And it gives opportunities to have authentic and meaningful dialogue about what Christian life looks like. Well, well my, my hopes for my children in church are that they would come to know a God who pursues them, uh, that they would know scripture, and they would uh, understand how extraordinary ordinary sanctification can look. And I think that comes about through regular worship, regular church attendance, and community building at the church. We build communities through uh, being at church, and I've seen my children really come to embrace the relationships that we've grown out of what seems like nothing, um, through our home groups, through uh, studies, through just coming for a meal. And it means so much to have people who believe what we believe, to, to share that Christian community for children, especially today where they go to so many places where um, God is not acknowledged. And so I think they find it really valuable when they find young people, older people, people in their lives who profess the faith and, and love, to, love to gather together. So without, without my church, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to do Christian life. I wouldn't know what that looks like. I would feel uh, pretty alone um, how to give my time. I wouldn't know where to give my time. I wouldn't know how to give uh, my resources. I wouldn't know how to serve others in need. I wouldn't know where to find them or whether it was worthwhile. I think it would be really hard for me to just even get started. I really don't know how Christian life looks without uh, church. I think a lot of times we think about church in two different ways. We think about the church universal, and then we think about the church particular. And I think it's equally important to love both. Um, but I think we show our faithfulness to the church universal through our particular church. And I'm so thankful to have a particular church that I can practice being faithful to because he's so faithful to us. And when you think about how you're going to be faithful to Jesus, 
how does that look? It's this open door, like, like just come and worship me and serve my church, love my church. Christ loves his church. We are called to do the same. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 13. Perhaps you know that the title of the message this morning is called, I Love My Church. Amen. And that's going to be the, the, the theme. How many love your church? Amen. Amen. John chapter 13, verse 34. The Bible reads and it says, A new command I give to you, love one another. As I loved, as I loved you. And you must love one another. You So you must love one another. Verse 35 says, But this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Now this morning. And this morning, I just want to just give you uh, some imp input, amen, and what is to love your church? What, is this, what does it mean to love your church, this church, amen? Now, I want to just take you to different places. How many of us uh, know that there are places that or location and buildings that we eventually got to go visit one time? How many know that? You know, there's places that we eventually got to go to that we might not like to go to. Amen? And I got some pictures. If you can throw me, let's throw me the first one picture. Out and, and tell me what you feel. This is the, this is the DMV or the DOL, <laughs> Department of Licensing. If you remember that, back in the day, they used to sit you, have you, now you got to wait outside. How many love going there? <laughs> lift your hands if you love there. And if you lift your hands, I'm going to probably pray for you afterwards. What about this picture? Show me the other one. I can see the reaction. When you see that, what do you guys say? No, huh? You know what it is, right? It's not a, not, not a lazy boy. It's a dentist's office, amen? Nobody, I don't have met one person that says, I love going to the dentist. Not yet, maybe the dentist guy, I don't know. The next one. How many of you, all of us, how many of you love going to the grocery stores? Bro, you don't even go to the grocery store. You're in the home, bro. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Usually I, I hear people, amen, I hear people out there, amen, that will say, man, I got to go to the grocery store. <laughs> I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go get some food. Come, can I be real, right? <laughs> now, let me ask you, how do you feel when you see this picture, the next picture? You gotta be quick with me, brother. Stay right there where you at, right there. Yeah. That's today, I mean. What do you feel about that? When you see that picture? Hello. Right? There's gonna be pl there's gonna be places that we must uh, eventually go to, like the dentist or the grocery store, or even to get your license renewed. But those are the places that we probably don't expect to go, but eventually we're going to go visit them. We have to. Can I get an amen? amen? And I'm not talking about Disney World. That's something that we probably want to go visit. Can I get an amen? amen? But I'm talking about places that we need to go because of the course of our life. We're eventually going to have to go to those places. And some of those places that I'm talking about, we don't like going, but we go because we have to. Yeah. Are you with me this morning? Now, the difference between those things in the picture I'll show you about the church, there's got to be a different perspective. Amen? And hopefully, hopefully when you come and see a picture or you know that you got to go to church, you don't feel like you're going to the DMV. Or the dentist. Because it's a different type of place. Can I get an amen? Right? As we begin to see those images, we begin to understand the difference. Because sometimes we can put them into that bracket. A burden. Can I get an amen? 
when God did not intend for the church to be a burden. Can I get an amen? Matter of fact, it's a place that you love to go. It's a place that you know that you're going to be spoken to and God is going to speak to you individually. Can I get an amen? Or actually as a corporate, as a church, God will bring, begin to uh, reveal some things within your life. And sometimes, yeah, you might not like coming because the truth will set us free. And sometimes we don't like to hear the truth. Can I get an amen? Are you with me this morning? And we begin to see that the church begins to develop what is called community. Right? It's a community. Now we were able to bless some of you that have been here faithfully for a long time. And when I talk about community, it's somebody that begins to bring their family, not only you, yourself, but also your children, are raised in the church. Are you with me this morning? Right? Like, you know, somebody like my kids, they were born in, in the church, right? And they were raised in the church. Now, by the grace of God, they helped me side by side to do the will of God. Can I get an amen? Right? The only thing that we wanted is to make sure that they get the principles and the values. I believe that God created church in the book of Acts for that purpose, to give us direction. For those that believe and have that, that lifestyle, amen, so therefore they can come to a church and, and be what uh, uh, welcome to that place where we're going to build family, restore relationships. Can I get an amen? amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. And we begin to look in the scripture right here. In the book of John, God begins to give us a new commandment. The commandment that says, I give to you is that you love one another. Can I get an amen? amen. That word love, people get it misinterpreted. Can I get an amen? amen. Right? But the love that I'm talking about is, it's a different kind of love that God is talking about. I could give you an illustration real quick. How many of us actually been to a brand new restaurant? You never been there before, a brand new restaurant, and you go there with fear because you don't know if you're going to like it or not. And eventually what? You get what you want. And it's good. Say it's good. And you finish your meal, everything's served to you, you feel good about it, even though that you walk out and speak to your wife and say, man, this is a good place that we want to come back to. How many have done that before? Yeah, man. Some of us, how many of you got some favorite places to go to eat? Yeah. Come on, lift your hands. I want to see. Right? I know some of you guys love going to Sasong. <laughs> right? That's what I hear all the time. We're going to Sasong after church. <laughs> right? Or Red Robins. I got a spot in California that I go to faithfully. I take my people, they even know me. I think they have a plaque in there with my name on it. <laughs> I used to go there when I was in high school. And that was our place with all the homies we used to hang around, the hamburger stand called Omega Burgers. Right? I go, as soon as I land, the car starts going that way. <laughs> like, I, I need to get a fix. Can I get any man? And recently, I just went over there with Tim, right? I said, oh, man, the girls are... They stay home. We're going to go out there and take care of what we got to take care of. What we got to take care of? My fix. <laughs> this is what you call fix. You got to know what I mean, right? I got to get my hamburger. Can I get an amen? <laughs> For Omega Burger, amen, with, you know, especially as soon as we pulled in, the lady knew me. Hey, how you doing? You want the same? That was a year ago. Can I get an amen? <laughs> she remember. Can I get, are you with me this morning? Amen. Right? And, and we got those those special places that we go because we like to go to those places. And the reason we go to those places is because they offer something good to you that is going to be satisfying to your needs. Are you with me this morning? But do you know that the church is not meant for that? And that's the perspective that people have today. They want to find the right church that feeds them and meet their needs. But that's not the concept that God is talking about. Can I get an amen? Because eventually you're going to get a bad meal. Hello, somebody. 
Eventually, you're going to get a bad meal when you go to that restaurant and you're going to go, wait a minute, what happened to the old chef? Hello, somebody. And that favorite place is not going to be your favorite place no more because you had one bad meal. Oh, you didn't get this one this morning. See, the church were not intended to be a restaurant-style kind of place. Can I get an amen? But the church was intended like this illustration. How many of us love to bless their children for birthdays? Or even for Christmas. Christmas coming around the corner. You know they give you a good list. You know what I'm talking about. They don't give you the dollar store gift. Or is, am I the only one like that? Nobody in my family says, uh, uh, yeah, give me something from the dollar store. Although I wish they would. But they don't. They always want to aim high. Am I, that's, oh, you're looking at me, I'm my only kid, my parent like that. They always want that, the, the PlayStation 5. I couldn't get them because it sold out, so praise the Lord to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, uh, uh-huh. You want to get the best. And then when you get the best for them, and you want to see what their reaction to that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You want to see when they open their gifts, and, and you know that you fulfilled what they wanted. Oh, you don't get it. Come on, come on. When they open that gift, and they see that they got that PlayStation. Oh, they open the gift, and they got that Barbie doll. Hello? And they make that connection, like, oh, you got what I wanted. I love you, Dad. Oh, you don't get that one either. Huh? I love, I love you, Dad. And then you have that connection because you become the hero. Oh. Right? You become my dad is my hero. My mom is my hero. Why? Because although all these years that you labor just to get that one gift, they appreciate it. Because he knows it comes from a heart, a sincere heart. Are you with me this morning? Amen. And I believe that that's the type of church that needs to be risen in our ministry. That is not to meet the needs of people, but it's to connect with people. Can I get an amen? amen? And when you give a gift like Jesus Christ gave his only begotten son to die for us on the cross, when you give a gift like that, then you are an individual that is grateful. You are an individual that become what? Special in the eyes of God. Are you with me this morning? Amen. And I believe that God, when God begins to speak about this verse and begins to tell us, I give you a new, a new commandment I give to you to love one another as I loved you. Think about that. What is, what is the kind of love that God gave us? It's not a, a love of restaurant kind of style. But it's a love that he was able to what? Meet our needs through the blood of Jesus. Why? Because we were sinners saved by grace. Can I get an amen? amen. And he died for us on the cross because he loved you. Amen. If you were the only one in this world, he would have died just for you. Can I get an Amen. And even die and send his only begotten son to die for us on the cross. That's how much of a love that he has for you and I. Amen. It doesn't matter what background you come from. It doesn't matter what style you come from. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. He died for you. Amen. Because he loves you. Right? There's only, there's only, he's given us his only begotten son. See, Jesus loves, brings us to a different relationship. I hope you understand that this morning. Huh? The death of his cross was an act of love because of his people. And early in, in John, we are told that it was because God's love, uh, because God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to reconcile us. To, to mend us together. Right? And sometimes when we come to church, even today, in this era today, we always, we come to church with the mentality of a restaurant. Who's preaching today? 
Hello. Who's leading worship today? Hello. Who's doing what today? And we come with that mentality, and when we come with that mentality, we leave this as we de- we leave the same because we put a limit to what God is bringing. Because God even used a donkey to speak, and I get a man. You know about that, right? In the Bible, God used a donkey to speak. God can use anybody, amen, to bring the word of God to our lives when he wants to. Can I get an amen? It's the way that we receive it. And sometimes we have that mentality that to come to church, it has to be broke down in Greek and Hebrew and Latin, amen, because if not, it's not the word of God. He reads for the new uh, NIV, that's not of God. He reads for the King James, that's not of God. He reads from this and that. That's not of God. We always become judgmental when God don't want us to be judgmental when God wants us to be what? Accepted. To accept the word of God. The true word of God. Can I get an amen? And that's why when we come to our church, amen, we begin to, to build what is called a relationship. A community that builds relationship. That's what people call you up. That's why people follow up on you because they want to make a what? They don't have to. But something inside, they, there's a need to connect. Are you, are you understanding what I'm talking about this morning? That's what's important to, for you to understand, that you must love the church. You must love where you're at. You have to love where you're at. Can I get an amen? Is the church imperfect? Yes. Yes, it is. As soon as we all walked in, it became unperfect. <laughs> as soon as I walked in and there, that imperfect already. Hallelujah. Pastor's here. Why? Because we all fall short. We're all, we're all human beings. I believe the same way you believe. When I get sick, my wife says I become like a baby. Hello? I don't know what that means. Uh, but I guess I'm a baby. Maybe because I'm human. <laughs> and sometimes people come and put pastors on a pedestal. Yeah, I said it here this morning. Don't follow me. Can I get an amen? Follow Christ because I'm following Christ. Can I get an amen? Right? And sometimes, you know, in our church we have a, an app, a Bible app, and we try to connect people through that because. Right? And I haven't posted some stuff there just to see. But sometimes I say, well, Pastor hasn't done it, so I ain't going to do it. Then you're following. Oh, you didn't get that one either. If I come next week with a tattoo on my face, <laughs> most of you guys are dying to get a tattoo. The pastor did it. I could do it. Oh, you didn't get that one either. Now you're following who? Some of you will judge me and crucify me in the cross with Jesus next to him. Hallelujah. Hello. But some of you will say, well, pastor did it. Sean getting me two. V and O. Hello. Don't get them. Amen. Usually people get those that leave the church. <laughs> then they're crossed out. You say, what happened? Well, I crossed them out. Ding. Cancel. No. <laughs> yeah, I believe one of our elders a long time ago, some of you guys probably know Pastor Ed Morales, he was talking about, you got to tattoo your heart with the vision. And people took that literally and they came back with the tattoo. The old tattoo everywhere. People are like, yeah, look at right here, my neck. Brother. <laughs> then they backslid out there with the V on the back. <laughs> Hello. Treasures out of darkness. What's up? See, people are intent to follow people. When we tell you not to, follow people. Follow God. Yes. And we say that. We don't, we don't do nothing to men, for men. We follow God. Then follow God. If I remember well, God used man to direct 
and to instruct men like Abraham in the Bible. He wasn't God. He was a human being. Can I get any man? Men like Elijah. He was a prime human being, but he believed that God could bring a rain. Can I get any man? Men like Peter and Paul, hallelujah, that directed the church. Amen. Actually, the New Testament is having half written by Peter. The Apostle Paul, that he will deal with churches throughout, amen, Corinthians and Ephesians and Thessalonians. Can I get an amen? Why? Because those church have some issues. Oh, you don't get that one either. If we get to talk about the Corinthian church, amen, all of us probably leave. There was fornication taking place in the leadership staff. There was adultery. There was all kind of stuff taking place. And he had to go and deal with those issues individually. And he would tell them to take care of it. So when you have issues, when you come to church and find issues, guess what? It's in the Bible too. Are you with me? Hallelujah. That's when you come to church, amen. You got to love your church. You got to love your relationship with God. Hallelujah first. Amen. We don't worship our ministry. We love our ministry. Can I get an amen? But we love what God done in our lives through the ministry. Can I get an amen? And that's important for us to... To, to understand that this morning, amen? Why? Right? Because we don't worship no man. We worship God. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. My eyes is focused on the Lord. Hallelujah. We know where we're going. Amen. We're going to the other side. Hallelujah. Of the river. Hallelujah. We know that God has given us a vision. God has given us a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. To restore treasures out of darkness. Amen. Right? See, you will begin to experience the love of the church when you begin to love one another. We come from a background that we never loved nobody. At least I did. Some of you guys, I love everybody. But that's like, oh, all right, praise the Lord. But I was in the world. I didn't, I didn't love my enemies. I didn't go up there and say, hey, what's up, me? I love you, bro. Hey, we're going to fight right now. If I hurt you, right? <laughs> I love. No, it was all hate. We didn't go rob somebody back in the day. I'm sorry, I apologize, but I need that money, though. <laughs> or else I'll cut you. And then I'll, I'll take you to the hospital after, but just give me the money. Nobody loved them. Like, come on now. You, you, had, to, you, too, you had to go had an attitude towards it. Can I get any man? Right? You had to go over there with some command words and scary words and and do those things because I was instilling you to be have hate. Can I get any man? Not about your parents, but about the world. And that's what the world gives us. The world gives us what? Envy. Covetousness. We covet people. We covet marriages. We covet this, what they're wearing. We covet the car they're driving. We covet, and we don't see it as Christians, but you're covering That's why sometimes we come in like twinsies. <laughs> We're twinsies. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Now everybody's looking at me. Like, <laughs> Our church is funny. I don't know. You said something about something. Twinsies over there. <laughs> Amen. You got to be your own self. Are you with me this morning? You gotta be your own self. God developed and created you at his own image, and you are individually loved. Can I get an amen? amen. Just like you are, can I get an amen? Don't stay the same way, but develop a godly amen. attitude amen. within your life. Can I get an amen? amen? Stay fast to what God has deposited in your life. Amen. Are you with me this morning? See, the church was never meant to be like a restaurant. But it was meant to be based on relationship. And, and something about our ministry is that I say ministry because we deal, we deal with, the, with the hardcore. Right? We deal with the hard-headed people. Don't look at me like, oh, you've never been hard-headed. We get them from the, from the alleys. We scrape them up on the floor. They've been stepped on so long, they, we, they, they look like gum. 
<laughs> Not Forrest Gump, but Gump. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We, we get them from the gutter, from the gutter molds. They've never been loved before. They've been mistreated, mistrusted. The least of the least. Hello, somebody. And that's where we get them from. And we begin to what, inspire them and give them hope and give them dignity and, and show them, show them what, God, God, what God's love is. Can I get an amen? We begin to dress them up just like the legion that God dressed up. If you look at the story of legion, remember legion in the Bible? He was demon possessed and he was naked and he was all jacked up and Jesus came and delivered him and he, he, he dressed him because he was he dressed him and when Jesus dressed him he dressed him nice because Jesus also wears some good fine linen look it up it's in the Bible pastor's coming up with some good stuff God already knows you it's in the Bible that's where they gamble his, his clothing hello because it's fine linen and the legion individual was naked, tore up, messed up, stepped out like gum. And Jesus came and breathed life to him and dressed him up. But he was so excited to follow Jesus. No, I don't need you to go with me. I need you to stay here and be a testimony of the power of God in your life to those that doubted you. Can I get an amen? Those that individuals that chained you down and separated you, I need you to be a witness of the power of God in your life. Can I get an amen? And just like that, amen, that's the type of, of, of church that we are. We are a church that we begin to what? Build hope. Hallelujah. Speak life. Speak vision. Hallelujah. And we tell you that you are more than a conqueror. That God can do greater things within your life. What's wrong with that picture? There's nothing wrong with that, but people begin to what envy. Because they see the guys in the home suit up. Why are they gotta dress up? Because we're teaching them. Hello? Some of them came homeless. Hello? From the street, tore up, messed up, twisted, right? I was that individual. Right? I shared that. I don't like to dress up. Matter of fact, I, I was invited to a funeral yesterday. You know, for those that don't know, one of our uh, guys that used to come here every Friday, his name is Tim. How many remember Tim? Not this Tim, Tim Mattis, right? And he used to come. Uh, he used to come here on, on a Friday by you know, Brother Brian used to bring him, and he used to come here and sit right here, and he'll bring his people from his house and stuff. He ended up passing away from the COVID. And I found out about it on the email. They sent me an email, and I called uh, Brian and Tim and asked them, we find out what happened. You know, he got the COVID and ended up passing away. He used to come here every Friday. But he had a church. He had a mother church. He, had, he, he used to go to the West Side Church in Richmond, right? And you won't think nothing of it because he will come Friday nights and sometimes a mess. I'll be like, I'll be like, when people mess, I'll call the people that are connected. Somebody missed, I'll call Brian. Brian, what happened with Tim? He goes, well, I'll find out. Right? Anthony, what happened with so? I'm going to find out right now. Hey, James, who you call? Find out. Right? Because those are the people that follow up. And find out, yeah, he passed away. And the COVID hit him, and, and that was it. It was over for him, and he ended up passing away. He used to come every Friday. Some of you guys met him, so you guys didn't. But he'll come in all smiling all the time. Found out yesterday, I didn't know too much of his story, but found out yesterday that he was a treasurer at a bank. No wonder he loved coming over there. I didn't get it, because he's like, if you saw, if you see his picture, like, okay. You know, you don't, you don't see that in him. Maybe because what got done in his life, you can't see it no more. Yeah. But they begin to read his story, he was, he, he used to smoke uh, PCP. They said that in the funeral. He used to do PCP. He used to do uh, uh, smoke uh, methamphetamine. He used to do drugs, all kind of drugs. Said, oh, no wonder he loved coming to our church. <laughs> he built that home. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? But you can never tell. So we went over there, my wife and I, and, and, and uh, Albert and Brian, we went to the funeral just to because they invited us, so let's go over there and see and, and 
sit there and heard the whole thing and Brian spoke and, and stuff and and then we were leaving. I'm not leaving, they were leaving, we were standing back. We like to stay up to the end. We all people, hallelujah, we stay to the end. It's natural. <laughs> we're like, let's go. We still there like, oh, we had chips, we we're drinking, we we're fellowshipping. It's instilling us. And they all came by us and they were like, hey, you pastor from Big John? Oh, wow. We talk highly about you guys all the time. Thank you. Do you know that he got he got delivered from ad that addiction right here? Yeah. The pastor mentioned it. Goes, you're the guy, right, babe? You're the guy. Thank you, because he talked about being delivered in your church from his habits. Right. Thank you. <laughs> you know what? What a fresh. Fresh words that I hear from another church. Can I get any man that they could that I could walk in and say, "Man, you're the guy. You're the people that he always talked about." <laughs> Hello, somebody highly about you guys and what you guys do. We need more of you guys. We need more. Why we're different, but we're battling the same thing. Can I get any man? Isn't that awesome? That you can go up to another place and then get recognized, amen, the work. Oh, you don't hear me. Although other people covet, other people might slander us, hallelujah. But there are some other ones, amen, hallelujah. They know and recognize that we're doing the work of God. Why? Because I love my church and I love what we do for God. Can I get an amen? Isn't that awesome? Uh, for me, at least that's encouraging. To hear from somebody else I never met. And then we went to Costco the same day and we got all these gifts. Maybe because he spoke some word on me. Like, I'm encouraged now. I love my church. Let's bless them. Or something. My wife took advantage of that. Hallelujah. Slice the cart. Let's go. Let's get something. Like, okay, I got it. I'm like, hold on, sister. We got a budget. Hallelujah. Let me cart. Let me the cart. Let me do this. I'll slice it. Hello. But before I walked in, before I walked in, some guy came out of nowhere and he just gave me a, like a like a surprise look. He's like, hello. <laughs> you get the surprise look and you got the mad dog look. The mad dog looks like, like I'm gonna what's up with you? I know that one. Like I could spot that one mile away. Hallelujah. But the surprise ones. Surprises me. Because he walked in, he was like, like he saw like somebody important. <laughs> and he, hey, Pastor. Gracias por todo. Thank you for everything. And he talked to me in Spanish, like, thank you for everything. I was like, hey, all right. <laughs> the love, uh, uh, Dios te ama. Bendecido, estamos. Uh, all right. And I walked away, my wife said, you know that guy? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, babe, my mind's messed up. I don't remember nothing. <laughs> I can have a gang member enemy come to me and tell me, hey, what's wrong with you? Remember? They're like, no, babe. <laughs> You're lying. No, I don't. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> but I walked in all day long trying to figure out who that guy was. Man, who's that guy? <laughs> I should have asked him, well, who are you? <laughs> but then I said, I think God, God, God began to speak to me and tell me, just receive it, brother. <laughs> That I'm going to use the people outside that you don't know to let you know and remind you that you are what you need to be. Hallelujah. And you're doing what you need to do. Can I get an amen? Not if the church don't recognize it. Hallelujah. Others will. Hallelujah. And I'm going to bring angels around you. So affirm your calling. So how many of us know that we need affirmation? Why? Ask me why. Because some of you would be too like you. Uh, oh, I'm not Superman. Come on. I can't wait till I go home so I can watch the game. <laughs> Don't look at me crazy. Some of you guys are ready to go to the game. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that. Because I'm my what? Human. Human. 
Although you guys want me to be super good. <laughs> but I'm not. I got a super guy. Yeah. I got a super daddy. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I got somebody that loves me. Unconditional love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I understand. Listen, I understand my purpose. I understand my calling. I understand what God called me here. Can I get an amen? And that's why when you understand those things, nobody or nothing will shake you off. When you understand your calling and your purpose, nobody will stir you wrong. Are you with me? That's what you have to understand. It. Many pastors, my friend, don't have those, that, those, that understanding. Many pastors, even this year, and I'm not talking about Victory Iris in general. I'm talking about pastor in general, have quit or resigned or given up on their calling. Right? Ask me why. Because they're human too. I learned this more. I learned this week that Paul went through a stress era. Paul, Apostle Paul, when he begins to speak in the scripture and talks about being crunched, but not broken. Hello, somebody. When he talks about the, when he got beat down, remember when he, in the Bible when he got beat down and beat him down because of, of, because he was a preacher of the word of God. We get all bent out of shape when people talk about us. Paul used to get not talked about. He got beat up. <laughs> Beat up to death, naked, outside the town. Imagine that would happen to us. I ain't never going to that church again. <laughs> but Paul got beat down. He's like, I'm trying to make a picture of it. But if we want to die, but he's probably hurting. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm going to go to the doctor. Like, oh, my God. And then he didn't go to Baskin Rabbits, uh, Baskin Robbins to go buy some ice cream. He went back into the battlefield. Why? Ask me why. Because he understood. He understood his purpose. I'm almost done here. I'll get the worship team real quick. Hey, Amen. I'm close to closing here this morning. God wants us to be in a church that builds relationship. And I believe that our church is a church that builds relationship. She got excited. Hallelujah. Thank you. She's new too. Hallelujah. We build relationship. And when you build relationship, my friend, you call it family. And when you call it family, there's going to be stuff that happens in family. Hello? How many have been to family events and there's always that uncle. Oh, don't look at me like it. You probably that uncle. I don't know. <laughs> right? You probably go, oh, he comes Uncle Chewy. He's come over here. He's oh my God, here he comes. <laughs> and then you got your favorite uncle. Oh he's here. Cool. Sometimes that's what happens at church. Here she comes. Oh my God. Oh, here he comes. Oh, yeah, he's a nice guy right there. We got our own perspective of people. Are you with me this morning? But the good thing that we have is a relationship. But it takes people to build relationship. It doesn't happen magically. Can I get an amen? It takes somebody to say, yeah, I'll go out to you with you. We'll talk. Take somebody, the invitation's there all the time. People will ask you, hey, let's go out to eat. Yeah, sure, let's go. And then you ask them, yeah, maybe next week. I took a step of faith, not a faith, but out of the box. Say out of the box. Out of the box. Because somebody, I offer my, my service to the church one time, and usually the people don't receive it. I just turn it all the time. Like, I'm open. I'm, I'm here Monday to Friday. You can talk to me every time. You know, I'm here. I come here every day. My wife's the one who pulls me out. Are you coming home or what? I sleep here if I want to. Like, I'm into the church. 
I'm trying to, I'm praying, asking God this message. I had this message a month ago. You can ask my guys. I told, I told them, like, I'm thinking about this message. It wasn't ready yet. Because I'm always thinking and praying and asking God. I took a step of faith. I, I connected with this guy here every other Monday. I'm trying to be faithful. Hallelujah. He took my offer and called me one time and said, hey, Pastor, I'm taking that offer right now. Hello. And we, we connected. We never, we, he's been with me for like 13 years, right? It's a long time. Hello. And we go every Monday, every other Monday, we go out to eat, have lunch, and we just talk. Right? We just talk. I don't break out with the Bible. Thus said the word. I'm going to disciple you, brother. We just hear each other. We just talk. He's going through some stuff. He'll tell me. I'll share some of my stuff. Not all the stuff, but some of the stuff. Amen. Right? And that's called what? Building relationship. Amen? The offer is there, but some of us, we don't take it because we're afraid of building relationship. If I was afraid of building relationship, I should have been afraid a long time ago. <laughs> Because a lot of relationships that I built, I left. Hello. I have people that have been with me since they were 18 years old and got deceived by the enemy some way, somehow. Hello. I got people that have been with me since two years old. Eat the end, right? And that happens uh, Friday night. We went to Sasso, and I was sitting there. Man, this guy was been with us for how long? Two years old. We used to babysit him. Not used to. He's still here. And I'm saying he left, but I'm saying he's, he's still here. It's just a reminder why I love my church. Right? It's a reminder. We got a young man right here that he don't see like he's plugged in all the time, but he he hears, he hears my messages. I won't say his name. He's here somewhere back there. One of the Rodriguez guys. Here's the message. If I let him run the home, he probably could run the home too. Hello. But you don't see him like anything, but it's because we build relationship. If I let him, he'll probably fight if you're talking about me. Hello. Because it's build relationship. It's about, it's about bringing, bringing, building relationship. That's what God wants. It's not a restaurant kind of style. Some of them will come just to get fed. Yeah, that's okay. You're good. But hopefully, eventually, you sh you switch it from a, re a restaurant kind of style to a relationship kind of church. And, and we can build a community that loves each other. Not because I say it, because the Bible says, a new command, I'm giving you to love one another. It's a command from God. And the love that we think is a love that well, then if you love me, you give me something. Give me, give me. If you love me, give me, give me. And sometimes that's the wrong mentality of love. Because eventually you're not going to get nothing. You get the, bad, the one, my, one bad meal. But that one bad meal will have you all twisted all around. Are you with me? Or that No will mess you up. You forgot about the thousand yes. I, I deal with my kids the same way. Learn to take the no's. Just like you take the yes. So my kids will ask me, hey dad, the one that I live with me now, hey dad, can I do this? No. Take it just like you take the yes. Hello? Take the no, just like you take the yes. Accept it. Because there's sometimes that the church is going to be corrected. There's sometimes that the church is going to be loved. Sometimes the church is going to be rebuked. Hello, somebody. Because that's the job of the shepherd. The shepherd is to what? To correct, to love, to what? To rebuke and to what? Gather. And to build and to equip for what? So we won't be deceived from other.
other things. It always takes me back to that scripture that says, in the end times, I'm going to paraphrase it, many will be deceived. Even the elites, the elites are the pastors and the leaders, are going to be what deceived. Deceived from what? From the truth. Are you with me this morning? My prayer is that we understand that you have a church that believes in the truth. We believe in God. We believe that he died for us on the, on the cross, resurrected on the third day. We believe in miracles. Why? Because you are a miracle. It's a miracle you're here this morning. <laughs> Can I get any man? You probably say that. It's a miracle I'm here this morning. Yeah, because you're a miracle. We believe in miracles. We've seen the sick be healed in this church. We've seen people get healed from cancer. We've seen people get healed from other kind of disease. We've seen people being delivered and set free by the power of God in their lives. We see marriage being restored. Can I get an amen? We see men cast the vision. Hallelujah. We got guys in the UTC. Why? Because they believed. Hello, somebody. So, therefore, we have a healthy church that is producing that is equipping. Hello, somebody. Are you with me this morning? She's excited. I like her out there. Hallelujah. She's clapping for everything. Put her right here. Hallelujah. Amen. She's in the home right now. Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. Come on, let's all stand. See, the church was built so we can what? love our community and our community those and we have a different kind of community we reach everybody now we're not specific in one area or another area we specialize in some areas but we are open broad amen we got professionals in the house we got people that never broke a plate that I know of amen hallelujah Cypri didn't break a bread in his life. Amen. So he says, oh, no. And then we got people that were just straight out. Dabble. Like I said it, yeah. Straight out dabble. Like, ah. Hello. Doing the work of the enemy, right? But look, you're a miracle. Why? Because, because of a man? Are you with me? Because of God. Using a man. Hello, somebody. Because God uses men. God doesn't show up here and they were like, okay, who's talking? We're waiting for God to speak. And he shows up. That'd be awesome, right? But he uses men. He uses people to bring the message. He uses imperfect people. Why imperfect? Because that way you know that it's not I doing it. It's God doing it. Can I get an amen? That's why I still got my accent. That's why I get stuck reading my Bible time when I read it. Why? Because it's showing me, stay humble, brother. It's not you. It's me in you. Can I get an amen? If not, I'll be speaking eloquent and breaking it down. You're like, wow, look at that. And I'm hitting home runs. So I was like, cock, cock. Everybody, oh, you speak so awesomeness. If that's a word, I don't even know. <laughs> Hello? Wow! He extrapolates the word. I can understand it. Oh, he uses the foolish things. Hello? Because I was a fool. And told me I could do it. And I was the fool guy to believe it. Oh, you didn't get that one. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believed it. I said, yeah, I'm that fool. I believe it. You can use me. Hello, somebody. And then when God gave me the mic, I said 10,000 amens in one word. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says amen. You know, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, hello. And everybody was laughing just like that. Hallelujah. And messing with my self-confidence and my insecurity. I'll never preach again. Stinky people. Amen. 
And the pastor put me to preach again. Like, oh, man. All right, pastor. Hello. And they'll throw a curve and says, make sure you stop saying amen. <laughs> okay. That was my worst message ever. I was like, ah. Oh. Ah. Hello. Let's all stand. I'll do the altar call. Amen. But you are teaching me. Oh, you don't get that. Developing the tool. Can I get an amen? And God will move. I will preach message. People will be broken. People will tell me, I didn't say nothing you said. I have people outside waiting for me telling me, I didn't understand nothing you said. That's cool, huh? And for the church house. That was in the people outside. Believers. I didn't understand nothing you said, bro. And I will turn around and say, because the message was not for you. Hello. And I walk away. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's why you didn't get it. Because it wasn't for you. And then he'll call me back to preach. And then call me back to preach. And then call me back to preach. And then call me back to preach. He said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give up on that fool. Hello, somebody. And I come back to preach. And I come back to preach. And I'm still preaching. Can I get an amen? Although people don't like it, it's all right. Although people don't understand it, it's all right. Because I, it's not I doing it. It's God doing it. Can I get an amen? And it's God's going to get the honor and glory. Are you with me this morning? And this is why I love my church. Because the church accepted me for who I was. I was a fool. I was not wanted. Believe me, I've been to other churches. I've been to other churches. And I was not accepted. Even not at my own church, my own dad's church didn't accept it. I could dress up and they still don't accept me. They still looked at me like a gang member. They still looked at me like a black sheep. They still looked at me and judged me. But then so way somehow I walked in a victory out of Seattle. 94, 94. When I walked into that church, I felt at home. I felt wanted. Oh, you don't get that one either. I felt like I belong. I looked around and they had, I thought the pastor was talking about me when he preached. Man, who told him my business? Have you ever felt that before? Man, somebody just told my business to the guy. Who told him that? Right? He said, man. And they came and they loved me because I didn't go dressed up with a suit. I was, I was still dressing up like a gang member because I was actually still a gang member. But people received me. And I never left. took my shoes off and tried some new shoes hallelujah somewhere else I stood out I learned to appreciate my church were there defects? yes many or thousands of them but God every time I saw something God used me to meet the need I will see something short I will go meet that need never brought it to pastor look pastor this is what's happening I took care of that need that was my job, to meet the need. You saw it? Meet the need. Nobody's reaching out to that person. Then I mean, guys showing it to you. Meet the need. Connect. Build relationships. Hello, somebody. Right? And when you understand that, then, then, then you're connected. And when you're connected, God is pleased. God is pleased. You become family like Alma and the Pinellas, Shannon. These guys that are here. He said, why are they always with them? They've been with me for like 13 years. She comes to my house uninvited. 
<laughs> Shows up with, what's for dinner? Like, what the heck? Three guys. Come on, what's for dinner? <laughs> right? I think she knows the code too. I don't know. He knows the code. He walks in. We have a code to my lock. He knows. He walks in like, hey, what's up, guys? So, I don't say that, but like, hey, what's up? I think, hey, buddy, you know the code too? What the heck? They come in like, hey, what's up, Pastor? They don't even knock no more. Only Lupe, she's welcome to come in, but she knocks all the time. I don't come in. But they all come in because we built relationship. We're open. It's us sometimes who want to be open. Can I get any man? So lift your hands right there where you're at. Understand the message this morning. Christ is forming many areas of life. Yesterday I went to a different area of the body of Christ. A different area. As a matter of fact, we're actually connecting because they're going to send the strangers out of darkness this way. They want to say, let me have your flyers and stuff. Let me have your home flyer. Let me have this flyer. And they're older people. They're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit, basically commit to one suppliers and let people know that there's a place for you. That's encouraging. After reading all this negative stuff all the time, to hear something fresh, somebody actually wants to partner in helping us out reach our people, treasures out of darkness. Are you with me? This you understand that? Amen. See, God built us to build relationship, and, and building relationship is we have to come out of ourselves. I was a loner. I was living by myself, better me, by myself. I will never snitch on me. My 
my friend might snitch on me, but I would never turn on me. I'm like, yeah, I did it. So I was a loner. I lived it, I did things by myself. So when I came to Christianity, they told me build relationships. I'm like, uh, what? It's like all you guys said, I'm on the show show. I was in prison system for a long time, so I don't know how to. So when I build a relationship with somebody, it's not me. It's the God in me. You got to understand that, though. It's when you don't understand it, it's like, I don't get it. He's the pastor. He should be more like this and that. No, pray, because it's not me. I'm, I'm good. I'm cool by myself. Shoot. I can watch the game by myself at home, chilling. Hello. I mean, nobody was telling me, oh, look at that. You guys messed up. Your team sucks. I don't need all that noise. I stay right there, watch it. We lose, we lose. I can do that. Because I know how to be by myself. I'm not by myself. I got my wife there. You know what I'm saying? So when I reach out to Tim, because he's my own director, it's not me. It's the God in me. And I raise to Esme. This is my office lady. Hallelujah. It's not me. It's the God in me. Because of me. The me. I'll be away from everybody. <laughs> Shoot. I stay by myself. Nobody can say nothing because I'm not nothing. But the God in me. I reach out to all you guys. And I'll text you guys. And tell you how God loves you. I reach out to you guys. I reach out to them. I even reach out to TJ. I reach out and message guys here and there that are my messenger. Even the new guy. I reach out and give him hope. Brandon, I reach out, right? It's not me, bro. It's the God in me. You understand that? Because without me, I just did by myself. I'm cool with my kids, my family. Yeah, let's go somewhere. It has to be the God in me. You, you understand that? Hope we get. I text pastors. I text elders. They trip on me. They don't trip like, oh, thank you, James. Appreciate that. I text Pastor Saul, elder. Hey, Pastor, como esta? Miss you, love you, bro. Not bro, but Pastor, love you. Stay up. Stay strong. Like, oh, thank you, James. They be tripping. Because God puts it on me. I text Pastor Tim Argersoni, one of our guys. I text him, and he didn't answer me in two weeks. He didn't answer my text. But when I seen him over there at the overflow, no, I seen him at the, at the camp. He texts me back. He says, I, I didn't need this text two weeks ago. I needed a text today. Thank you. He told, he told me in person. He goes, I didn't need it two weeks ago. I needed it today. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I said, it's not me. In my mind. The God in me. Because of me, I could be in the bushes somewhere hiding. Hello. Hello. I could be by myself and live life. You understand what I'm talking about? It has to be the God in me that makes me come out and deal with issues and things. Because in me, I the me in me wants to fight. Come on, don't look at me like I'm not perfect. Hallelujah. You talk about my mama, what's up? Hello? See? Everybody's like, oh, it's, not the, it's not of God. It's not. Because it's me. But the God in me tells me, chill. Settle down. Be an example. Love the people. Oh, you don't get that either. Hallelujah. Love the people regardless. The God in me tells me something different. Hallelujah. And I got to submit. And I got to obey. And I got to flow. Can I get him man? And be the best I can to the God I love. So I'm going to open this up here this morning as we sing the worship song. If that's you this morning, God woke up something in your life this morning. Come to this altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Lift your hands right there where you're at. Just you and Jesus right now. Come on, you got to embrace it this morning. Come on, embrace the word this morning. Accept the word. Understand the word this morning. The church was not built by man. It was directed by God. In the book of Acts, God developed it. So it's not a man thing. God thing. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for being faithful to us. Well, sometimes we're not faithful, but you are faithful, God. Thank you, God, for entrusting us. morning, I pray you will seal this message. Seal this message in our hearts, Father God, to love. Love our church. Will not be a burden. Or just another building. But it's a place, a community. A place that we can reach and learn how to have relationships. Place that we learn how to learn how to treat one another the right way. No manipulation, no conniving of the world, of Father God. But being truthful. Forgive us. Forgive us if we talked against the church, not our church, but just the church in general, God, because it's been built by you. You're the creator of it. Sometimes when we come against any church that represents you, we, we're talking about you and what you've done. We don't have that understanding sometimes, Father God, forgive us for that. Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that we will embrace the message, embrace the vision, embrace that calling, embrace the relationship, Father God, and help us and work in some areas that we need to work with to fulfill it, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now, Father God, have your way, Master. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Amen. Right there, those that are watching on Facebook Live, thank you for watching. Those that are here this morning at 6 p.m., if you want to come, we're going to be speaking about the truth. You're welcome to come. If not, we'll see you throughout the week. Don't